monsters. Welcome to the stream. Sorry I said 2 p.m. Uh, in my head, I said 2 p.m., but then I said, no, 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 3 p.m., because 2 p.m. is too soon. I'm getting my haircut at 12 in the city, and I need to get back in time, and that guy takes an hour to cut my hair, and I'd be barely making it back, and I knew I wanted to go to Business Costco, which is over there, because I can get drinks at Business Costco that you can't get at regular Costco. And yes, Dustin, of course, this is where the cool kids are that you had to ask. Makes me wonder if you're one of the cool kids. But, you know, you're here, so you're probably one of the cool kids. It's a close one, though. Knife's edge. And so here we are, an hour late or right on time, depending on if you're in my head or not. Oh, and look, we got Inception going on, which is very exciting uh, up here in the window. Um, I'm going to move this over here. Uh, look at what I was doing beforehand, before the stream began, and what I was doing was Substance Painter, or what I was trying to do, but then it quit on me, because, um, we've got a lot going on all of a sudden. It's a busy, busy time. What is this? This is the village wardrobe scene. Oh, I work with Katie. Okay, this is my project with my wonderful animator, Katie. And we can close that out. Uh, what else do we have going on here? The hair, which um, through some thoughtful prodding, um, folks made me realize I need to stop being a perfectionist and just get this out. We can always make it better. The big thing that I don't like is this stuff right here, this um, hard edge. And I was trying to get the shader updated to make it soft, more soft. Um, but the problem was that it, I couldn't find a, a person to do it. A, a couple people um, tried, but it didn't. It didn't happen. Um, I thought. I swear. Hold on one second. Let me just close all these. New find dot unity package by date facial hair. Thought I had. I made an update that made me feel a little bit more confident. But I don't like that harsh line. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Facial hair. Uh, no, that wasn't the one I'm looking for. It's hair diffuse, this one. Uh, and, oh, yeah, so apparently I didn't import this, or I did, but it overwrote it or something. Um, that was hair diffuse, was it? Maybe there's a, an underscore in there. It's warm, by the way. No, no, underscore there. Um, where is my... We need to find this texture. Demo hair built in. Mm. Okay. Um, well, wherever could it be? The one I just imported. Oh, maybe I can look back in time and see the stream. And the stream is not delayed enough. Oh, well. Um, it's like this. Oh, I can't space open it. I see. It's like this, but th these are not the ones. These are not the droids I'm looking for. Um, where did I put them? Shared, maybe? Oh, that's the environment shared. That's not even... That's all preview stuff. I haven't even... Oh, shared in up here. Um, da, 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 it shouldn't be there. It would be then in Infinity PBR. Sh shared. Hmm. Nope. How do you find just the stuff that you just imported? That's what I'm looking for. Is there a way to do that? Oh, it's odd because I just imported this. Infinity hairstyles was the same. Warning, file exists with a different GUI. I don't believe that. This is what I'm seeing right here, by the way, and this warning right there, and I don't I'm not sure exactly. I think that it's slightly different than what it actually says. 
Let's see, hairstyle. Oh, you know why? Hmm, interesting. It's not called this in the other project. Um, st uh, hairstyles uh, mat. Oh, I'm searching in the wrong search field. Um, okay, so this is what it's. Okay, that's fine. Okay, never mind. We'll keep that. We'll go with this. Um, so this is where is it in the right spot? It is sure in the right spot. Yeah, that's fine. Although really, this is the only for the hair pack though. So I guess it wouldn't be in the shared files. Share files is shared among the humanoids and the hair pack is separate from that. So that makes sense. Okay. Sidetrack over, go back over here, click that, uh, find out that it's in the wrong section entirely, and go back up here, shared files, textures, and take V2. All right, so I updated the uh, material a little bit to, the texture rather, to make it a little bit more broken up so that, you know, it's not straight, such a straight line. Uh, and that made me a little happier. So. The hair is coming now, which is good because the stuff I wanted to do on the stream today is also uh, helpful for using the hair. And now we also have these things on the hair, which is really cool, but full circle to where we began painter, I was going to make new ones. That's just using the normal map and um, the normal map and, uh, and a color, but we want a prettier one. So I have my files here. So let's quickly make these. Well, I, I did this right before I went to leave and then it crashed on me. So yeah. All right, let me get this window more narrow so that everybody can see what I'm doing over on the right. And I just realized you weren't able to. There we go. Uh, oh, that's the wrong window. Did it crash on me again? It did. WTF. Okay, this time I'll make the window the right size first. All right, new. Don't crash this time. This time before I do much of anything else, I'm going to save it just in case. So we'll save it. We're going to save it as hair, jewel, jewelry. All right. Now, if it crashes, we don't have to waste as much time. Okay. Ah, oh, mother effer. Well, that's annoying and frustrating and annoying. How are we supposed to make cool jewelry if I can't get this to work? What's extra weird is that it's like a new one. So I'm not even, you know, not mean. See, this time I just saved it. I immediately saved it. Oh, I know I didn't. I need to make this narrower again. Oh, crash. All right. Well, I guess the gods of the world are saying, don't do that right now. That's going to keep crashing on you. So I guess I won't do that right now. All right. So anyways, the point is that the hairs are coming very, very soon. And they're really, really cool. Really nice. Lots of hairs. Lots of mustaches, lots of beards. More hairs over here for the ladies as well. Although I think we do have plans and we did it to some of them, I think, um, to make them gender agnostic so that even the women can have beards if they like. Um, we're very progressive here at Infinity PBR and I don't care if women want to have beards or if men don't want to have beards or if non-binary people want to have goatees. 
that look like this. If they want, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, also, some worlds with dwarves, the females do have facial hair. So that would be fun. That would be something important for those worlds. All right, so that's the hair package. And then this is this package. Ooh, secret character coming. Character just got made by Ashley, a character artist. Look at that, a forest warrior, modular wardrobe. Mm -hmm -hmm. What's that gonna look like? Who knows, we'll see. Let's see, we are in my asset store projects. That's good. This was just a test scene I had going on. Um, somewhere, somewhere I have a scene that says demo in it, I believe. And that's what I wanted to work on today. Scene, yep, let's see, scene, demo. Huh, hmm. Was it not in this project? Oh, this is the armor packs project. Ah, yes get rid of that we don't we we don't need we're not in that one. Oh, we were in the right one here all right this was the right one okay demo t scene i need to change this shirt it's warm in here all right it's a good thing i'm not on video because now i'm topless it's that kind of show um let's see it's uh, this scene, human demo. It's not actually the human demo. Uh, I just said demo. It's 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 really going to, going to be the um I'm, 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 I'm prefab and object manager demo video because the scene itself is not going to be in any demos. This was just my testing thing. So let's see. I was testing on this half orc mail here and this is the latest iteration are we seeing the whole window we are this is the latest iteration of the prefab and object manager script component editor script it's gotten some improvements um, now instead of the word def def with a period it's saying it's default there's just a star so if you want to set the default you just set it like that. You can see your objects down here. You can see your blend shapes that you want to force to happen right here on activate and on deactivate. Um, that's fun. You can turn things on and off just by clicking here and here. Now that should have turned on though, because this is a default. Let's see. Interesting. This is the default. So it's supposed to turn on automatically when the others turn off but it doesn't appear to be doing so. Well, that's not fun. You're not supposed to have bugs. We can also copy things. Um, let's see. Oh, it worked there. Why did it work there and not here? Interesting. Interesting. So it works there, not this. Now this is, I believe, I was playing with the copy button. So I wonder if it changed somehow. Um, can we look at the debug? Does that show us what we want to see? If we look at our prefab groups, element three is default. Let's see. So right now, element two is default. Let's turn off debug and see our fancy thing. Make that default. Turn on debug. Ele okay, element two is now default. Okay. So it should work. Turn off. And it didn't work. Well, we're going to have to say it with me now. Everybody, look at the script. So we're going to go to prefab and object manager. Can I just say open script here? Is there an open edit script? Does that work? It does. Magical. I'll have to zoom in. Oh, hey, Oliver. How are you? Just just now looked over to the left to see 
the chat. Uh, coffee beverage. I've been, I, since I went to Business Costco uh, the other day, I went to Business Costco after driving someone to the airport. It's a drive over there to get over there, and it's a bridge toll and all that stuff, so I don't go often. In fact, I've only gone twice now in the past year or so, and um, once was today. And I got, I, I used to get uh, this, uh, this uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's some like nitro uh, coffee beverage there. And I'd mix it with the Starbucks Frappuccinos, just a splash of the Frappuccino with uh, the other stuff. They don't have the nitro stuff anymore, which is very disappointing, especially since I did find a small box of it at regular Costco that somebody apparently had returned or something. Anyways, so I got more of the Frappuccino stuff, and I've been mixing that with coffee and ice cubes and making a nice, refreshing beverage. And um, All right, so here's the copy group. Um, we're looking for the turn on and turn off in here. Um, let's see, turn... And I know turn is not turn. There we go. Um, deactivate group. If the group is active, uh, so we set to false, not active. We do the wardrobe prefab manager on deactivate for this group in case there is a wardrobe prefab manager there. If there's not, then you ignore that. We go through the group objects, and if it's a prefab, we destroy it. Um, and if it's not, then we just turn it off. And then we check for default. Aha! Well, I think we are checking for default. If it's true by default. Ha, ah, get it? Um, let's see. So this doesn't get used at all, okay? All right, all right. These would be, okay, that's fine. Yep, they're all, they all seem to be passing in the default. So um, it should do this. Um, and group group type. Group type is there. Um, all right. So let's just spit out some debug logs. Debug.log. Uh, check. Oops. Check for default is true and group type is group dot group type uh, I think that part will work so it's probably here let's see default group index is negative one for each group if the group is not the type I can update this this uh, method uh, huh well it is a ghost night you know, I named it Ghost Knight only because there's no body, and then I made the head pop off in the Unity version. And I was like, it's a ghost now. That was the only reason. Um, oh boy, can I tell you guys something? I can't, but something exciting is going to happen pretty soon. Uh, okay, prefab group, group type no. If, the, it's, if it's not default, then continue. If it's active, then, oh, that could be why, because it, it's partially active. Interesting. I think, oops, I think this should be greater than one. Because a group is active, will return, I think, a one, zero, one, or two. Yeah, and really what we care about there is whether it's a two. If it's two, then we don't want it to happen. This yellow means that it's partially active, which right now it shouldn't be partially active at all because the dude's naked. Ah, 
and therefore none of these should be turned on right now unless you're into that sort of thing yeah so there's no there's no wardrobe there the objects are here it's probably these I, I had this other feature where you can hide things my guess is that's throwing off this method let's see for each if group objects object to handle We're basically counting the objects and oh I did add the thing about rendering here so yeah I'm not sure why it would be returning ah I see I see so it's returning it's adding one if these are set to not render but that shouldn't even matter so um, so what we're looking for prefabs, prefabs plus plus, there we go. So what we really want to say is if it's rendering, then prefab plus plus, um, I'll make, make myself a note here. So if render is true, then, uh, uh, increase the increase the count of prefabs for this group and then the rest will check for if whether the in game object is there oh and it already started working magic 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 what is this is that Mike and Avianca Hmm. I'm now I'm looking at messages from friends. Oh, a cute dog. And one from Jason Wyman. I think the answer to that question is probably yes. I'll have to get back to him later. Oh, hello, Paolo. How are you? All right. So now turn that on. What's going on? Oh, well, now these aren't coming on at all. So now, okay, they're being turned on, but clearly they're not being marked as turned on. So that is, did I just ruin everything? What was the other thing I changed? Um, group is active was... Here is two... Um, group is active. Okay, put this back to zero in case that was the thing. Man, all I did was add a little checkbox and now all my other code is messed up. Not messed up, but needs adjustment. All right, so yeah, it needs adjustment. It's not um, uh, telling it whether it is um, active or not. So group is active, should be two if it's active. In this case, let's go back into this. So we've got a bunch of objects which are active. We have some which are not active because they're set to not render. That's these ones with the check mark off. And so really we should be getting X number of prefabs, the ones with the turned on one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. And then X number of those. So what we really want to see here, um, we're going to re rewrite this method um, because we can. So uh, first we're going to find um, renderable prefabs. So um, we're going to say int renderable objects equals uh, group dot group group dot group objects dot count uh, x 
x dot render is true. Oops. All right. So that's the renderable objects. Renderable objects. Uh, and then we are going to find the live objects. So int live objects is going to be. Uh, what is this object to handle thing? So there's if there's no object to handle, then continue. That means that this is empty, this little column, but that shouldn't happen. I think I, I automatically remove those now, but OK. Um, so down here, we're saying if the it's if it's a prefab and there's an in game object and or if there's not a prefab. OK, so live let's say live live prefab objects equals uh, group dot group objects dot count x uh, dot x dot is prefab and x um, dot in game object not equal to null and then int uh, live object objects equals group dot group group objects dot count x uh, x dot not ooh, not dot x dot prefab is prefab and um, x dot object to handle dot active self so if they're active so this is going to be total live objects is going to be the combination of those so uh, var live objects equals live prefab objects plus live object objects in whatever order and then we can say if that equals live objects then return to if um, renderable objects um, if renderable objects is greater than live objects and live objects does not equal zero or just say greater than zero then return one otherwise return zero so that's less code right let's see if it works Did it? Oh, you know, I hadn't done this thing yet. Ah, it seems to work. Let's see. Turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. And can we do our default now? Turn off. It goes to default. Good. All right, we're back to normal. I got these Italian cake things from Business Costco. I guess I was hungry at the time, and I just dropped a crumb somewhere on my oh bounced off my keyboard Whew, that was a close call um what are these called classic italian rainbow cake bites the original cake bites and none this is not one of those knockoffs this is the original cake bite cake bite from cakebites.com in N new york united states of america and um I'm not sure if I like it. It's very dense. And ah, that's why. That's why. Sorbitol. I had one bite and I and I thought to myself, I'm not sure if I like this. And I thought maybe it was the almond flavored cake. But now I think it's because of the sorbitol. They didn't there's enough calories in it that you don't think they'd put fake sugar, but it turns out there is fake sugar in it. Oh, there's also palm oil. I should. I need to check for that because I don't want to support palm oil because of the orangutans, you know. There's also artificial stuff in here. So I don't know what that. Uh, well, poor, poor purchase. 
has bio bioengineered food and greens, but that's okay with me. That one has saved a lot of people from starving. So anyways, all right, so now that's working. Okay, so back to the tour. So we've got these new features. This, this feature is really cool because now it means you can kind of like audition things as you go along rather than um, uh, having to turn it off and then find it again. But here's another cool thing. I'm gonna turn these objects here off here. We're gonna create a new wardrobe group. group. Turn that off. We're gonna call this, um, well, we'll call it armor one. Uh, and then we're gonna open our objects and see this whole select equipment object thing here? It's empty right now. And there's a tool tip that will remind me that I have to click this button up here. Um, I, I, you can toggle this on so that every time one of these objects is loaded, it does this, but it's a uh, method that uh, runs through all your prefabs and finds the prefabs that are uh, tagged to be basically um, the groups. And I think I need to make an update to make these update. Um, let me do that because this this should update and it will if I close it and open it as you saw there. Um, maybe you saw there and so I, want, I need to make that automatic because that's that's annoying. So we're gonna um, fix that. This is this is the thing. I want to make a demo video for this whole system and update the packs, but I need to go through and fix all these small little issues. You know, dog food, my own stuff, and. Uh, yeah, so this is gonna be find equipment object prefabs. Find equip, that's on the editor version. Find equipment objects, equipment, equipment objects prefabs. Uh, there we go. And I'm not going to make it yellow, actually. I wanna keep it to be that fancy cyan question. You know what, instead let's do magenta. Um, because cyan is the button I'm using for my other new thing this little button that goes directly to the docs and tutorials. I realized that would be useful because I've been, you know, trying to do a good job of putting my docs up on my doc site and yeah, I don't link to them from the assets themselves. And so now, once this loads again, oh, that's much better. Now you can click that, oh, and it loaded up over here and it loads up over there. So it loads up in a, in a web page. so that's nice. So now this is much more pink. That's good. I need to change it on the other one. I'll show you that later. We'll update it there too. Um, in fact, let me just do it now. Uh, dot cyan. Dot magenta. All right. Now solve that. Uh, we'll see that later. So now, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, the do cache. Um, do cache. I I think that's weird. I think I think it is um, being called. Ah, we need to do do cache. Oops. Um, do cache and set this to true to do the groups. There we go. All right. So now let's try this again. We're going to uh, delete this one, create a new one, and go from there. All right, delete that. I add a confirmation, mostly because I can't get the undos to work properly with this. I've been struggling. I spent I spent a whole like four or five hours trying to get the undos working and it wasn't. It, it does weird things and I don't like it. I need to fix that at some point, but that's uh, not a highest priority is just getting it out. So, okay, armor one. And then we're going to open our objects. Nothing's here because we haven't reload our groups. Interesting though. Yeah. So the idea is that maybe between the last time I load this script up in the in this time, that maybe new equipment objects showed up. And so therefore we need to click that again. It only has to happen once and then you can manage your, to your heart's content. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. So you can still manage things. But if you want to add equipment objects with this new tool, there it worked that time. That's good. Uh, if you want to add equipment, we should move this over here. I'm not sure why it's over there. Oh, probably because of the recorder. That's how long ago it's been sitting there. Um, now the equipment objects are there. So now we, oh, hmm. 
we don't have it set. Did we not import the armor? I guess I probably didn't. Well, let's do that. Um, I know I, let me load up my, I know I um, have uploaded the armor to the asset store, but did I activate it? Did I push it live or not? Oh, I have to log in. Okay, I'll do that. Um, because I need to download it into this project here. Drafts. Armor, armor, armor. Oh, yeah. I did not. So I have to do that here. Yes, they work with all the pipelines. Uh, we'll remove the 2019 version. Remove the 2018 version. Ain't nobody needing that anymore. And submit. And we're going to go back to all packages, drafts, and armor. Same deal. Yes, it works with all the pipelines. To remove that and remove that and submit that. We have to update the descriptions later because really I'm going to need to upload these again with the latest script here. Um, but yeah, one step at a time. Oh, submitted. Uh, just the two armor packs? Yeah, just the two armor packs. All right, go back to see the chats. Don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. There you go. And now we're going to install those with the package manager. So we'll go to the package manager. I wonder how long it takes for the package manager to realize there's a new version up. Let's find out. I could just, of course, export from my uh, computer, but um, I don't want to. OK, so we'll download those. Hmm. OK, well, that's doing that. Let's check out these hairs, because these hairs need to be set up in the same way. And I can show you the other script. So the other script, just make this cleaner, is a equipment object script. And you may have seen that. I don't know if you've recently been looking at the humanoid stuff. Um, oh, the females. Yeah, the females are supposed to have beards and mustaches. I mentioned that earlier. So I've got the prefab folders ready for it. But I don't think we ever got to that point because I got stuck on things. And so we moved on to other things. Anyways, the point is that now all of these can get themselves an equipment object. It was already selected. Uh, and now there's all this cool stuff. Um, and it's magenta. So uh, all the details here, it populates itself automatically. So all of these get populated automatically. There is this button to populate this in case you know, it for some reason isn't there, but otherwise will happen automatically, which is a wonderful thing. Um, we don't need to show the default inspector. And then this whole wardrobe prefab managers thing, um, we need to cache first. And so we can do this on all of them, um, selecting multiple works for this, which is nice, makes it a little bit faster. This is something you don't actually have to do yourself. This is, I will be doing this for you right now. And uh, but if you ever create your own wardrobe or use you know this system for anything, then you can do it that way. So now it's found all the wardrobe prefab managers in the scene. We're going to find this one. This one is the human male. So I'm going to select human male v4. So this is just the prefab that has a wardrobe prefab manager on it. And I'm basically saying, hey, this works with that one. Now, you can select multiple ones. So if you have some object that does work on all of them, you could select all of them. Uh, so we're going to do that for, for all of these uh, right quick. And since I already have this, I don't need to recache it because it's been saved, which is nice. This is going to be human female. Uh, nope, not half orc, human female. And we'll do the half orc male. This is really neat. When I first made the equipment object 
script and I thought to myself, is this overkill? I don't actually need each object thing to have a script. But I still thought to myself, but it's very specific. If it has one, then we know it's meant for this system. And then later, a few weeks ago, I thought about this and thought to myself, I could make it easier because someone on the on the uh, Discord was talking about wanting a um, prefabs that had all of the armor already set up in this system, and the problem is that there's just too much uh, customization stuff in that regard. Like, there's no way I can create a, a setup that just works for most people. So it would be, and I'd be doing a disservice in some way. You could argue that. Um, by making people not need to set up their own, they don't learn the system, and they really should learn the system because it's a cool system, and you can do a lot with it. Um, yeah, so that's that's all. So we add that, and then the female for the elves. We add that. We choose elf female add, and we are set. So now let's go back to the package manager. Again, all these messages. I am popular today, Mr. Popular. All right, import armor pack one. This is going to take just a little bit. Uh, what do we want to import? Do we want to import everything? Probably not. Um, I don't want to import that. I'm going to deselect everything, in fact, at the start. I don't want any demo scenes. I do, however, want this. And I don't want the equipment system. That would ruin things. Don't want any of those. That would ruin things. So I only want this. And is there, do I want everything in this? Let's see. Let's see. I don't need the post-processing. I do need the meshes. I do need the textures and materials. I do need the prefabs. Okay. It's always a good idea, especially in a production project or one that you're working on actively, to check things when you import from the asset store just to make sure you don't accidentally overwrite things. Even more important with my stuff since unfortunately I update scripts from time to time and then that can cause some problems. So this is going. Do, 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 do. Well, that's a cute dog. That's what I have to say. And oh, and a cute cat too. Hmm. What's better, dogs or cats? I mean, you don't have to answer it. It was a rhetorical question. Everyone knows dogs are better than cats. But this has taken a while, and I don't want to do anything while it's importing. <sighs> I do like these armor packs. I'm thinking, been thinking more and more and more and more about how I can make a better humanoid character system. There's some specific challenges to it, though. But if we can overcome those challenges, then I think we could make a humanoid system that would have essentially one body for males and females. One body for males, one body for females. But modular heads, hands, and feet, um, which would allow for... Replacing those with things like goblins and cat people and lizard people and other such things. So a lot of the wardrobe would um, just work because it's the same body as long as it doesn't cover the hands, feet, or head. Um, and then uh, blend shapes, of course, would, would account for the various sizes of things. So if we have a big troll, the blend shapes, maybe there'd be some special script that has a default value for the blend shapes that forces it to start at a default value. Something like that. That's doable. And then, um, yeah, and that would that would be a lot cooler. And then also if the other body parts that aren't the modular parts, so the 
other limbs, not the arms and legs, or arms and, um, yes, yeah, so the arms, the legs, the torso, etc. If those could be turned off, then you would, you know, we'd still do our best to avoid clipping with our blend shapes and stuff, but you could turn those off to just get rid of the idea of clipping entirely because they're turned off. Now let's do armor two. This is actually the bigger of the two, so this is going to take a little bit longer to import, I believe. Same deal though, let's turn it all off, collapse it all, load it all up. We need this one, but we only want, we don't need that, we only want those, yes we want those, and yes we want those. Oh, and the clothing, hmm. do I need to import the clothing for this demo too? I don't think so, that might be overkill. Um, hmm. I do want to showcase the hair as well. Hmm. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Hmm. I like warm summer days. I don't know about you, but I was in the San Francisco city today and specifically near that Costco, that area gets so freaking cold. It was like 60 degrees max. Everyone was wearing jackets, jackets except for me because I didn't pre-plan. And it was freezing and the wind and the, the, the low fog was, you know, it was sunny, but the fog was right there and it was like cold and blowing and that's summertime over there. But where I am now, it's much warmer. That's my story. Just filling time. Filling time. How's the stock market doing, huh? How's the how's the how's the weather where you are? I know it's great where Oliver is, and uh, Dustin. I know it's hot where you are. Um, Merrick, pretty sure right now Euro Europe is insanely hot, is from what I've been reading. Um, Damn it, I didn't mean to click that. A notification came up on my phone just as I clicked a uh, link. Yes, that will work. Um, save the date, by the way. Mm. July 28th. Let me see, what, what day of the week is that? You're the first to receive the save the date for July 28th, maybe 27th, off to find out. One of those two days, 28th or the 27th, save the date, okay? It's a very, very, very important date. Um, it's only two weeks away, which is not much time only 99 F William oh man I don't mind 99 degrees actually it means it's gonna be a nice warm night and there's gonna be a good opportunity for bike riding on the e-bike in the nice air um, sitting outside in the shade doing doing the work stuff what is it right now I've got my uh, tw 29 C here where I am and that is in Celsius because I'm trying to get used to Celsius but in Fahrenheit that is 85 degrees, which is a perfect temperature. I think everyone can agree that that's a perfect temperature. Uh, and it'll be pretty much like that all week long. A little cooler, a little hot for a bit, and a little cooler, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, 38C up to 40C up in the uh, other part of California. Woo! Oh, it worked. It's in. All right, look up. All right, so now those should be set up already with the event uh, um, equipment object. So if we go back to my half orc mail, I will have to click this again because we do have new objects to cache. And uh, I put a note here, I don't show a progress bar because I found that when I show the progress bar, it takes three times as long, which is weird. 
Is STL St. Louis? Ah, oh, humidity. Oh, by the way, welcome, Bongi's Creations. I don't think I've seen you on the stream before, so I'm glad you're here. And Arkansas, same same deal. Ah, see, Arkansa, you're in you're in you're in winter time. That's the worst time of year, winter time, in my opinion. All right, so now it's already here. It's already popped up, so we can see all of our armor sets that we just imported. So now all you have to do, now you can add them one by one, or you can click this button. Check this out. Boom. All right, well, it, was too, it took a little bit longer than boom, but oh, he's got no pants on. But that's okay, because we have the option for things like universal trousers and other pants. So we can simply add that by going to our other ones here. And we could try um, universal trousers add that and if we don't like that then we can do something else um, let's turn that off for now see I'm demoing a potential way of using this um, so if we don't like that we can be like well, what about the human the human pants and I think we called these here trousers as well yep trousers add that Okay, that, that's something. Let's turn that one off. Let's see. We've got other pants that we can audition here. So we have the half orc ones. Find the pants, elf pants. Oh, this is the elf arm armor, I see. Oh, I like those. Those ones might be the ones. Uh, and let's just add the half orc ones as well, just to make sure we see all of them. So we find the pants. I'm sorry we don't name them the same thing every single time. It's uh, it's embarrassing. All right, so now we've got these and we can see in our game view and our scene view what they might look like. So now with this button, we can just turn them on and off uh, just like this, just to quickly see without removing them from the whole thing. And I think what I like is the elf pants here. So I think we're gonna go with the elf pants um, for this. No stitching on those. Why don't I have stitching on those? I don't know. Um, right? Is that what I want? Those have no stitching either. Those have stitching. But I feel like they're too short. Um, yeah. So we have we have this. Now we also need shoes because um, in this demo, if in other demos we might have uh, you know boots be their own thing, so you have all the different boots. Um, but in this one, we're not going to do that. So uh, I do need to add boots here. So we're going to find boots. Um, and I think I think my favorite boots are still the human ones. Boot left and boot right. Especially with leather armor. Oh, but these don't work as well with the those pants. Okay, but that's okay because I can just turn those off and turn on these ones instead and they work pretty good with that these are the same group so there we go so we we'll use that so that was all pre not pre-planned but I planned on the fly to show you how you might use the system to choose the wardrobe and so now we've got those turned off I can leave them there though they have no impact on anything while they're just sitting here um, so I'll leave it there and, and leave that there so now we've got our armor one and we can do similar things where we create a new one and do armor. Now I'm going to copy that too. And you get the idea, maybe. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and so now for each one of these, we'll do a very similar thing. Um, we'll go in to armor 2, we'll add all, and we'll get ourselves some pants on and some boots on. And what does my elf boots look like real quick? Uh, oh, let me select my elf armor. Boots. Yeah, I think those ones work better for this, but I also need then the boot cuffs for these. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll, I'm okay with that. 
And we need the pants too, so we'll take the elf pants while we're here maybe and just see if that works. Um, and there was one, th one other thing I wanted to do. Yeah, that'll work. So for the longest time, I've named these like half orc male elf armor unattached. That seems like a mouthful here. And so I did want to update those. So I'm going to save the scene just in case something crashes because from time to time Unity does that. Um, and I'm going to go into each of these and rename those. So we're going to call these. Oh, and that's because this is populated by the name of the folder. It's not something you can control except for changing the folder. So we're going to call this Elf Armor. Uh, we're going to call it actually female elf armor and male elf armor and male human armor male half work armor female Human armor, female half orc armor, uh, fem female hair, um, uh, male elf hair. We should say specifically what race it is female elf hair. Okay. Um, we need to do the same for the half orc and the humans. So these are down here in my cold storage. And prefabs are going to be. That's the hair pack, not the hair pack. Half orcs, there we go. Uh, there's those long names. So we're going to call female elf armor. Female elf armor. And female half orc armor female human armor who's working on a cool game right now like as we speak male elf armor male half orc armor male human armor um, female half actually I don't think we didn't need to specify that uh, male hair because these are going to be specified by the equipment spot um, uh, equipment object all right and then humans oh by the way today's totally a nap day I don't know about you Whew. been tired all week I think it's going to be tired for the next couple weeks. It's going to be crazy next couple weeks. Did I tell you save the date on the 28th? Killing Wolves, a new world. Excellent. You know, I haven't played that as much, William. Um, I think I'm on level like 59 or 58, but I've pulled it up only a couple times in the last few months and just, you know, bumbled around a little bit, but that's that. That's about it. Nice. Why are you going to start next week and not today? I mean, it sounds like you're kind of already starting. You're just doing pre-work, but... Um, what kind of game? I want to know. And then we have um, prefabs. There we go. So female elf, female elf armor, female hair, female half orc armor, female human armor oh interesting I should actually almost separate this out because um, I'll tell you in a second Mel, male elf armor let me just finish these and we can go through it. male half orc armor male hair and whoops, male human armor and the thing I was getting at is about redundancies in the names where it's male and female that's better just to be in a folder and especially because when I go back up to here and oh I'm gonna have to reload 
stuff. So let me do that. When I go down through my list, there's going to be lists of mail, 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 mail. But of course, they're all mail because um, they're all selected to be half orc mail. I'm only going to see things that are selected to be half orc mail. None of the objects in the female ones are going to be that. So this is redundant. And instead, we should just have mustaches, hair, elf hair. Um, Etc. Elf armor. For some reason I read elf hair there. Probably because hair, hair. Uh, yeah, that confused me for a little bit. Ah, nice, nice. See, I turned off the chat um, in New World at some point and or made it so, so I. Yeah, so I just couldn't see what other people were saying and all that. Finding time, Oliver. I don't know what you mean. Whatever do you mean about time? Don't you have all the time in the world? I don't know about you, but I have 40 hours a day. Narrative-driven game, basically telling a combined story of my military experience as well as a, f a flatmate who was a dog handler, delivered in an FPS. Nice. You know, I learned in film school a long time ago, in a writing class, that there's no one better to write your story than you. And so therefore, people, authors who write stories based on their own life, tend to write really good stories when they're based on their own life. And sometimes they write terrible stories when they're not based on their own life. But... Um, People tend to be good at that part because they know so well their own life, or at least not so well necessarily, but they know more than others about their own life. All right, so now um, we have this, and now, um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, we put pants on, so we changed the name. That was, That's what I was doing. So now we can do armor three. So once I make sure this is all working, I'm going to do uh, this kind of setup on... Um, well, I'm going to do some setup on all of them, so there's some variety. And then I'm going to do uh, one of these, probably on the human male, I suppose, um, for the demo video itself. Time. You should get a um, tape recorder or use your, uh, your phone to record it while driving. So just start talking while driving. You're on the right path. All right, we're gonna add all of armor three. Heh, <laughs> no pants. And we will take the, for this one, we'll try the, what about my other armor's boots? Armor six. Yeah, look at that. I was thinking some of these might work. That matches pretty well, so we'll do that. I used the same um, substance uh, materials that I or or smart materials I had made for both of them, so that there would be some more matching going on. Uh, but we still need pants, and I think for this one we'll try the universal trousers. There we go. That'll work. So of course, with any of these, you just click the. Well, these oh, these are turned off on because they're empty. Interesting. Interesting. Let's change that. Let's fix that in the script because um, that's in this part of the script. Return. Return to sender. Return to. So what we we want to return zero if there are no. Um, renderable objects. So um, if render row equals zero, then return zero. Um, because right now none of these have any renderable objects, so they're returning uh, two because zero equals zero in most parts of the world. Oh, I kept seeing Neil Gaiman's Masterclass and Story Writing in uh the youtube ads hi jason story speaking of story writing oh 
I, oh, you joined earlier. I didn't see it. <laughs> What's funny, Jason, is I'm sitting here in my in my boxer shorts and nothing else on because it's hot in this room. <laughs> so no, we did not put pants on for this stream. This is a, a pants off stream uh, that we're doing today. All right, so now those are all turned off. So now any of these that we turned on, we can just quickly, of course, click this button to turn on these wonderful wardrobe sets. These ones aren't set up yet. They still have all the objects from those packs. And of course, they don't all work together. They have variety. So, whoops, I accidentally copied it. Copy works though, which is great. Um, and so now let's do armor four and I'm gonna just kind of bust through all of the rest of these. Oh, apparently I need to, oh, because I saved. That cache happened fast this time. Interesting, I don't know why it happened so fast that time. Um, okay, we'll add all. And we'll add some pants and boots. Let's see, what's armor seven boots look like? Boots, 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 boots. It's supposed to be elvenish. That's good enough for movies. And we'll add some pants from the, see if the human pants works. Should name that human wardrobe, I think, because it's not just armor. Trousers. All right, that'll work. All right. Uh, and for these, we could even add shirts and stuff, I think. Uh, we might have to get fancy with the blend shapes, though. And I don't know if I want to go too deep in the demo for that, but it could be cool. So if we go to our elf armor, the elf has a cool shirt um, and sleeves, too. Add the shirt. It's probably going to poke through. That's what I thought. And we'll add the sleeves, too, while we're at it. And I think... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> skirt I think I at some point I should update this to make this more human readable shirt I think this is actually making it shorter um, and revert back at the end. Um, so that should now, yeah, so that's working. That's good. Um, uh, what's this object called for the armor for main? Yeah. Okay. Armor for main. Yeah, this is hard to, uh, why am I seeing armor three, not armor four? Oh, that's weird. Oh, no, the blend shapes are just matching that, but it's not using that armor um yeah we're not going to use a shirt for now just because I, I need to figure out a better way to display these and i think that'll have to be in a future update so instead we will take these shapes turn these off uh, and then turn the shirt and sleeves off and we'll go hardcore like that instead um, now we could of course add other things there are other things we could add we've got the um uh, half orc armor, and we can add the arm wraps, for instance. Um, and that's a cool little touch for that. You know, you could do that. So there are more you can do with that. And armor five. Select armor five, add all, and a boom, pantsless. And so we'll take our. We'll go the elf route again. 
there's that red in there. So we'll take the elf pants. Elf pants and the elf boots. Boots, boots, boots. And the cuffs as well. There we go. And now we've got that matches quite decently, I think, actually. Um, and then we'll, for this one, let's just add a little extra pizzazz, a little extra flair. Maybe the uh, arm straps and armor. Let's see if we add the two armors and then the straps that go underneath them as well. Um, there we go. So now we're mixing, mixing and matching different things in a very nice, pleasing way. We got elf armor and armor pack one going on in here. And now we're moving on to armor pack two with the armor six. And add all. Oh yeah, this is that's the money shot right there. Um, wow, yeah. Uh, interesting. So I just had a thought that I had a thought. Let me tell you about the thought, and then I'll read all these messages y'all folks have been writing. Um, the thought was, oh, there's a helmet. That's cool, but ooh, but the hair. Then you have to click the hair thing. But I have that revert. Uh, you notice this perhaps that you can add a thing and then click the revert back. I wonder if I should add an option for other objects, essentially, or other groups saying that when this is active, when this is turned on, make the hair group go to the no hair and then on deactivate revert and now that I talk it through it's like a duh yes you should do that that's like almost absolutely required because then you don't have to worry about the hair management and with the revert back it'll keep track of what the last hair thing was of course it won't necessarily save that if you serialize it so you'd still have to handle it yourself all right, future update. In fact, as a future update, updates to make. Not in the game modules bundle. Updates to make here. Um, well, right here, we'll say, uh, we'll put this um, prefab and object manager. Add a group option similar to shapes where groups can be forced on and then revert back when a group is turned off. All right, so I'll make a note for myself. Whew. Yeah. Epsom salt, the old Epsom salt thing, you know, like a regular Friday night. All right. See, Jason, your mind immediately goes to like grand solutions that are really good. Something with a search box, jeez. But then you'd have to know what you're searching for. Um, this is how I solved it for these ones, for this latest iteration. This is the new edition, this whole select equipment object thing. The shapes is not new, as you can see. But you can see how I would separate them out by the different shapes. But I think I need to do a little bit more on that as well. That needs to be updated a little bit more too. So for now, we're going to not because Jason saved the date. The 28th is a very important date and I only have two weeks. So I don't have time uh, to do other things. I need to focus now. Put my game face on um, to get ready for two weeks from now. All right. So where are we? Six. This is a full outfit, um, so there's really not much to change there. The armor pack two, 
I think is the better of the two, unless you want leather armor, of course. Um, but armor pack uh, two, the armors are almost all. I think there's only one is not completely full, but we'll see. Armor pack two is um, all full armor stuff where it's just, you know, it just works. Share The universal um, collar and the universal trousers are shared you don't you can use different objects or the same they, they come with different ones but you can make them all the same if you want to be a little bit more optimized um, but otherwise it's a lot easier to set up because they already have pants on is is the point they're wearing pants this is the only one where it's like a little less sparse there's the arms and then there's one that doesn't have a helmet uh, and that's about it so armor 10 add all there we go. That one's the tank armor. All right, so now we've got all the different armors. Uh, I am going to turn this weapon off. Realistically, the weapons themselves can be and should be, in my mind, part of the equipment in Prefab Manager. They can be there. Um, in fact, I can kind of quickly showcase that. So we have that here. So we have our things here, and we will close this group. We'll create a new group and we'll call this weapon type and the weapon type we'll call this what is this weapon called here uh, club we'll call it a club and let me turn on this phone I turned off the wrong thing it turned out but that's okay so the prefab and object manager can handle more than prefabs it can also handle objects and so if I open this up and bring in my club, it will now attach that. And now when I turn it off, uh, it doesn't destroy it. It just turns it on and off because it's not a prefab. If it was a prefab, it, was, it would destroy it. And then um, I'm going to create another one called sword. And in sword, we will do the sword. Oh, and we will do, we will do the sword and bring that in here and that's that oh that's a different sword um and the other thing is um you can have none so there's this this is always optional but none will be my default so when i turn off it'll go to none that means though that i can also turn on none so if i'm here i can click the turn on or specifically call that via code to go to none so it's a sort of a universal turn everything else off option a way of doing that um, if every entry looked like that it would auto make them folders I think I'm halfway to where you you are mentioning. If I'm hearing you correctly, Mr. Story, then um, you're talking about like the 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 um, path to the object assets slash whatever. I could go back three spots, and it would be, for example, clothes, headwear, helmets, iron helmet, etc. Um, I'm similar to that. I the 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 the, 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 the um, oops. Uh, the drop down here uses the path um, for the one la 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 uh, one layer of that essentially. Um, so, yes, I don't go further than one though for this. Maybe a future update, however. So now we got weapons and we can turn those on and off. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was was hair. So let's just turn on our our, our default one there and we can do our hair now and this is where we're going to showcase the new hair stuff hello Raphael, how are you so we're going to create a new group we're going to call this hair and we'll create a new group call this uh beard and create a new group and call this mustache uh, so for the uh hair group uh, we will call this in a real world I should have each one have the exact same hairstyle it would be called exactly the same so that in my code I can do that but for this we're not gonna 
worry about that um, per se. So we'll just say hair one, hair two, etc. Um, and for the objects, we have to do our reload, I guess. That was fast. I wonder why it was so fast. So we have all these new hairs. And we have the old hairs. So there's a shit ton of hair options. Um, oh, and the hair is already on because, oh, because this was not set up to have this used. There we go. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, so we'll just call this hair buzz. We'll, we're, we'll uh, call it like it is for these. Um, and let's just open all these up and we will ah, click that again because I reload. Okay. Um, male hair, uh, human male long. So we'll call this uh, human long. Yeah, so I guess this would be better just called buzzed. And add that. Okay. Human short. Add that. You get the idea, right? You get the idea. Elf long. Add a new hair group and elf short. The more I think about it, the more I definitely need to make an update at some point with that um, groups option because we have hair like these short barbute, which is meant to be used when the barbute is being used, and you have short hair. Um, it doesn't look good by itself. It's not meant to. Um, yeah, but that will have to happen another time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I checked with my time traveler, and they said I just don't have it. I don't. They. I don't have the time. <gasps> Wrong button. Um, by the way, Jason Story. One thing I am. I, I almost messaged you about to get your your feedback on is the undo. I'm not going to press undo here because it might screw things up. And I'm worried about that and embarrassed if it does it live. But I have not been able to figure out how to get undo working properly on this. It gets wonky uh, and it's annoying. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. What is pony? So elf ponytail. Elf ponytail. And. see so hood so we're just gonna call this half orc long and ooh I should also add a button up here to randomize the randomize button everyone loves a good randomize button right who doesn't like a good randomize button and if you don't like a good randomize button then you can just get out right now I am 100% not serious about that, but you can get out right now if you don't like randomized buttons. Um, do, 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 do. Add the half orc short. And one more of these is going to be the half orc pony tail and that is on male hair half orc ponytail add that and there you go so now we've got those these are the original hairs that are already available um, in the package which is great wonderful but now we're going to create a new one um, how many are we going to create because I can just do them all at once uh, this is going to be hair how many do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
Ooh, so we're gonna call this comb over. Comb over. So 11 more to add. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All the hair options you could ever, ever want. Not really, you could probably want more. You guys are all greedy. Did I click too many objects all at once? Did I make Unity crash? It's possible. It is possible. Yeah, I think the problem with the undo is is I'm not just doing straight like I changed a thing. I'm doing something that changes like five things and it like brings objects into the scene, destroys other objects, marks some things as true, changes some ints around, and it's all in one button. Yeah. Um, so hair after comb over is faux hawk. I think it's because I have so many pre prefab groups open. Um, because when it does the reload prefab group, it only does the active ones. But since they're all active, it's loading them all. Hero. So loading all of these at once to save time was a bad idea, I suppose. So. Oh well, not a bad idea. It wasn't the worst. Wouldn't get anyone fired. Hair. Cane add. Middle part. Add. Northerner. I think this is supposed to be like, I don't know. Whoops. Northerner. But this um, equipment object update is really, really something else. Because before you'd just be dragging from over here, it's not difficult. But it's more fun, I think, to do this. Um, old man. Like the other way would be to just do this, essentially, which is fine. You can do that. But I hesitated because I needed to confirm that I was in the right folder structure. Um, so, yeah. Oh, short choppy didn't save. Short choppy. I'm going to call this side braid. We should call it the URI instead. I mentioned on a stream that I had URI's hairstyle. Hi, Merrick. How are you? I saw your message from earlier. Sorry, I put the time wrong. It was really supposed to be 3 p.m. my time, not 2, but. You know, my brain's been mush. It's gonna be mush for a while. Um, side braid. Oops, should probably spell it right. Side bread. Squall. Squall. Wallace. You mean William Wallace? Yes, I do. And did I miss one? Or did I just miscount? Uh, Fauxhawk, comb over, hero, cane, Middle part, northerner, old man, short choppy, side braid, squall, Wallace, Zell. And I guess the classic nun um, is 
is a good one to have none. Well, I should not add a space there. None. Okay. So that's just no hair at all. Um, so now I think we have a whole lot of hairs, which is really cool. And do they look good with lighting? Probably decent enough. Um, certainly, I'm more pleased with the front than I was before. And that was the thing, the most major thing that was keeping me from releasing it. I still want a better shader. Um, but it's fine. But see, yeah, see, see that I'm annoyed with that right there. But um, yeah, we can get a better shader at some point. Old man, look at yourself. You're a lot like me were. So now you get the old man look. Okay, so um, I do think though that a a um, a sort of a random button would be really neat, just up here, right? Um, and that would be a public method too. Um, a public method means that you could then. You know, like if you're starting a character creation scene, you can just ran have a randomized, um, a randomized one. Um, should we should we do that real quick? Should we make a little random button right here real quick? I think we should. I think I think I think it's it's yeah. We should do that. That sounds like the right course of action. Let's search for groups. There we go. Uh, so this is where the button's going to be after that. Type details uh, right here. It's going to be right after this, in this, before this end row. We will say if button um, random. And we'll make this just 60 wide. We'll see if that works. And see if that looks OK. See ya. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go to sleep. Have a good night. Undo custom image editor. Yeah, I think I, I think it, uh, Unity does have a built-in one. I just don't understand it well enough to understand how to get the more complex undos going on. Ooh, that button's all the way over there, and that's because I didn't give myself a width here. Um, can I do? Where's my width supposed to be? Width it would be there. Okay. Width, font size, bold, true. Okay, but I think 100 is not enough. We'll say 200. That way the button is a little bit more over here. There, that's better. That's better. And what do we do when we do random? Well, first I want to um, actually do something else. I want to say if um, if a da, 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 group 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 uh, groups of type. Where are we? Groups of type type name. Hmm. Uh, all right. If if can random randomize uh, type name, then we can randomize. So what we're gonna do is is do a background color. If if that's true, we're gonna do color um, white. Uh, uh, otherwise, color black. No, that's already there. Um, so not background content color if it's going to be white, otherwise gray. 
Okay, we'll try that. And can randomize is going to be a method here. And it's going to be public. And come on, writer, can randomize. It's been doing this recently where it, I, I create, a, do something, and it kind of goes and changes everything. Not changes, but moves the, the, the view. I don't know why. Um, so one thing to, the only thing we're going to check right now, I, I'm, why I'm doing this is I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a button that will allow them to be randomized or not. So you can choose to not include some in the randomization. Um, and, uh, and so I'm going to add that later, but for now there has to be at least two to randomize. You can't randomize if there's one or zero. So we're going to say if, um, uh, uh, groups. Oh, this is not supposed to be here. Okay, never mind. Can randomize. So this is actually going to be on the manager. Um, my bad. There we go. That's probably why it was. Yeah, not public. Uh, okay. Not color, bool. Um, so if groups group prefab groups dot where uh, x x dot name equals type name uh, dot uh, mm. oh yeah. So we're going to do count group type equals type name is less than two and return false, um, return true. All right. So we'll add more later. Um, so we're not going to make this a return statement. Uh, we will add more later. Um, so this would be color, color if not color. All right. So this one should turn gray and this one should stay white. That's the idea. And it did not. Maybe because it didn't finish updating. There we go. So now you can click the button, but it's not going to do anything. Um, yeah. So we will say, so if there's a button and we can random, we can randomize, then we'll do something. Um, and that's going to be uh, manager dot random randomize random group from uh, type name or not random group random uh, oh yeah random group of, of, of that type okay there we go And it disappeared. Okay, so a couple of things I want to do is um, uh, type name, and we're gonna say exclude um, or a bool exclude active equals false. Actually, true. We'll just say it excludes active, and then we're going to do this. We will say. Um, Does link have a random option? Var uh, groups equals group prefab groups dot where uh, x x dot type equals type name. X dot group type 
equals type name. And then if um, exclude active, then groups equals groups dot where x dot dot x is not active. Um, and then you can cheat a little, huh? Random value is greater than 0.5. Oh, so that's like a half and half, so you'd get half of them. Because random.value, I'm assuming, is just going to give you a random between 0 and 1. And from this, we're going to say uh, groups, groups, random.range. Uh, Zero through groups dot count. Oh, we should probably do two two list. Well, I guess I could do. I don't know. I don't know if there's any efficiency thing, but groups equals groups dot two list. Um, there we go. Uh, count. Okay, uh, that's weird. Um, the active. In the engine random dot range zero through groups count. Uh, I need a random one from groups. A random one. And I don't think this should. There's a better way. Ooh, Jason's gonna paste me a thing. <laughs> Look at me, I'm getting pasted tonight. It's Friday night and I'm getting pasted. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Bring this over here. Oh, what a wonderful day to not be outside. It's a shame. Usually I'd be outside right now. Boom, 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 boom. Boo, doo, 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 doo. The mail person, the mail carrier always is talking on the phone. And I wonder who, who they're talking to. Groups should be a list now, but we're going to say to list up here. And we'll, we'll, we're still waiting for the paste from uh, Jason. But in the meantime, I'll still try to do something. Uh, this is going to be a list of prefab groups, prefab groups, 
try group list. Uh, okay, so group dot count. There we go. Yeah. So uh, groups dot random dot range zero groups dot count dot active. The engine dot at okay. Activate group. There. I bet. I bet. What's MH? MH. I'm. I'm thinking. Uh, is that the, this is the game you've been playing? I believe, right? Uh, something of honor, Medal of Honor. Is it Medal of Honor? I think it's Medal of Honor. Yeah, I bet it's nice. You're out near the coast where it's warmer. Here, the coast is cold. There, the coast is amazing. And yeah, Monster Hunter of Honor. So this will work. I'm um. I'll still come back to this with Jason's suggestion because Jason always has fun suggestions that are usually really good and I learn a lot from them. But this should work for now um, to activate a random group. And we're going to actually call this activate random group. Uh oh, did I already build one? Activate random. Oh my god. Oh my god, I already did. I already built a random thing in. This is why, this is why I need to update my own scripting stuff. Oh, maybe I did. Huh. <laughs> ha! Well, uh, call me silly and slap me across the face a few times because I already did this. Ha. Let's see what Jason has to say. Innumerable ex extensions. Just drop that into my project anywhere. You don't need to do anything. Then at the top of my script you're current in, right? Using Jason's story. Ha! Ha! I just really want to write using Jason's story. Um, all right. Uh, so I've got a script from Jason. Let me get to my downloads. And so I'm going to drop this into my script. We're going to drop this in the right spot. Uh, Jason, are you, are you saying that I have permission to use this in a commercial project? that will be sold on the asset store to other people. Um, and this is going to be scripts, scripts, scripts. Is this an editor script? Let me see. It doesn't look like an editor script. OK, so Infinity PBR, where am I? Why am I? Yes, Infinity PBR. Do I not just have a regular old scripts, demo scripts? Uh, it should just be named scripts, I think, but that's OK. Um, Great. Uh, folder, we're going to call this scripts Jason story. Can I, can, can I use your name in here? You tell me if I should not add your name as um, sort of a uh, um, uh, an homage or, 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 or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, a thing that's that's from you, even though I know it says namespace Jason story and all that, but um, yeah, let me go back to my to my chat window here. Okay, what was the nope for? What was the nope for? I wasn't I wasn't seeing that. Okay, uh, so we got this. This is a script here. So let's load up the script so all the folks at home can see, and I can read through it and try to understand what it does before doing anything. Okay, so innumerable extensions take random from a list, generic type. Um, 
items, okay. Take random x amount. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I always get confused with the generic stuff, so I wouldn't have written it myself, but it's straightforward and I like it. Um, and then take random amount. If amount is greater than that, then amount equals all of them. And for each one, re you'll return take items to take random. Ah, interesting. Now, with this, though, um, this does not, if I'm reading it correctly, does not ensure that you won't get multiples. Um, is that correct? That's my understanding here, because we're going to take random for each time that we're supposed to. Um, but that means that it could take item number four, you know, every single time. In which case, this doesn't really matter. Is that correct? Because here we're saying that the amount equals, we're capping the amount at the items count, but this isn't going to care about getting one of each. You can tell me. But I think I will now use JSON story. So let's use JSON story. Uh, not blend shapes manager. Prefab and objects manager. OK, this is the best part of my day right now, using JSON story. Oh, I have Fisher Yates. I have a video on Fisher Yates because after you sent me that document and, I, and I, I used it, I made a video on how to use the Fisher Yates shuffle. Um, so that's I've got a video on that. But this will work great for now. So thank you, Jason. Um, take random. So we're going to um, now we're going to update our so I re I already did all this. So uh, random group. Um, so let's find that new one that I just made. And we will just for now go like this and uh, activate random um, group type. If null or white space groups of type, activate group, random range, that. So we will now say it's not very much different, is it? Activate group, take random, uh, and we're going to pass in groups of type. Why is this saying this? Do I have to pass in the type, I guess? Uh, prefab group. Do I have to do that? Interesting. So I see. Ah, that's why take random makes more sense than I suppose, doesn't it? So because you're saying get the groups, take a random one, activate that. Okay. And then I can probably make this one different. Let me see what I do. Oh no, I did I did that here. Where group type looks type and string type. Selecting the names. Interesting.
Um, I do want to do exclude um, bool exclude active equals true. And so we do want to say dot where x uh, and not x dot is active dot get groups of time. Ooh, see, interesting. Hmm. So I need to adjust this. I'm going to call this get group names of type. Group names of type. And we'll make another one called uh, public list uh, prefab group get groups of type string type and make this uppercase T. And there we're going to just return that without caring about the name and yes so here we can simply say that oops and for this one we can say this My brother's calling. Hold on one second. I got to pick up this. He doesn't usually call. So let's see. He wanted to know, and this is a this is a quiz for all you Californians. My brother, he's driving from the San Francisco Bay Area back down, get the reference, to Irvine specifically. And he was wondering which exit off of five or the five, depending on where you're from, has the cheapest gas. Do you know, you Californians out there, which exit has the cheapest gas and has had the cheapest gas for at least two decades now? That's your quiz for the day. Okay, so I guess I can keep these more like this. All right, uh, get groups of type. So we really now need to change this to be that and um, Oh, but this only doesn't work with lists. And get groups of type returns a list. So I guess could I just do public static um, t take random t this list t items items just copy and paste what am i doing typing stuff out like a loser um can i do that no apparently i can't why is this giving me an error I think I did add the using, yeah, using JSON story.
Ha, William, you're old. Ooh, some additional power here. Let me see. I still don't have my audio set up properly, but we'll figure it out. Um, I'll load up my volume. Um, go to my a disc accord. Click the start voice call, not a video call, because I am, as I said earlier, in my shorts and all that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, I can. Magic. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The folks at yeah. home will only hear you from my speakers, but they'll figure it out. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It, this should be a quick one. There's just a couple of things because this is. I, I understand it's a little bit confusing. Um, the first thing to note is um, I might as well just explain what we're doing. So we're doing is called an extension method. An extension method, as it sounds, extends onto something. So if there's a class you didn't write traditionally, like a list or an array or anything else, and you'd like to add a behavior to it, you mm -hmm. can basically extend any object you like. And so if you look at the script, the only keyword that actually matters is the word this. So if you make a static method and you just have a this as the first parameter, mm -hmm. you could have this int, this string, this vector three, it doesn't matter what the object is, if you do that and it's a static method and a static class anywhere in your project, you can then later on say vector three dot call my method. It will just magically do it as if it was in line at that position, um, which is really powerful. So it lets you do a lot of stuff like this. So all I'm really doing is I'm saying this list means any place where there is a list and I write list, you know, my list name dot magically call this, pass itself in and use this function for that purpose. Mm -hmm. So it just does a little bit of like magic for you. That's step one. Step two is obviously using generics. That is to say, you don't have to make one line for each and every possible list type, list of bins, list of strings, list of whatever, right? So that's one. But then on top of that, we're using an interface. We're using iList. And what iList is, is it's anything which implements iList gets this feature. And the reason I picked iList is that's actually the base type that C Sharp uses for every single thing that has a count value. So already every array, every list, every collection type already has that. So um, it, you don't need to add specific new ones. It will just automatically support all of them. Um, the last thing I would say on that is as, as much fun as it is joking around by us using JSON story or whatever, uh, <laughs> honestly, just change the namespace to your own just for your own simplicity. Otherwise, you'll have to remember at the top of every script to write my name and it'll just get confusing. If you just change the namespace on line four to infinity PBR, it, you'll auto inherit it for every single script you'll have to think about it again. All right, I'm going to stop using you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then that should work. And the reason I wanted to specifically talk about it though is because there's other cases where you could do this for your own stuff, not just this one case, like generic list one. Um, the, the thing that comes to mind is I know that you're currently doing like a uh, filter or search on a group. And yeah. it occurs to me, you've got a lot of things which have a category or a search or a group or something. And so if you were to make, remember we did um, way back with I the- I do. I do remember. Tree structure. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, part of that whole confusion, there was one bit in particular that was important, which we made an interface, which is like, has children or get children, just something. There was something we did which basically said, I don't care whether I am a category or a t group or a team or whatever. Yeah. As long as I can provide node, I'm a thing that provides nodes. So my point is, is if you came up with something similar for things which are in a group, and they have a single property called group name or something to that effect, you'd be able to make extension methods for anything in any list or anything that's ever has a group. And you would be able to do things like literally write that take random group. And it would just feel like an organic natural feature of every groupable thing. Mm. There's lots of this stuff you can do where you can let it inherit a lot of magic for you. So as long as you understand like that, because what we're doing is we're inheriting the concept of list, but you've got lots of behaviors at the moment or objects which have intrinsic behavior so rather than having to constantly write like for example where blah 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 is active if you say 
I have something called an activatable thing, and all activatable things are activatable, then you could literally say that we're active or we're not active. And you could write these little helper functions that again, you don't have to actually write the code in every single one of them. If something happens to be activatable, it will have inherited the property that is, is active, is not active in the list or in the collection. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think th that's. That's something I need to explore more of for sure, because there are certain, I mean, yeah, honestly, just this, this itself is, is probably an update and an upgrade rather to stuff I do in my dictionaries thing, which, um, I use some generics. I think I can't remember if I use this style of generics or if I list out each type, I might list out each type. Um, yeah. yeah. The only reason I specifically, um, cause the thing is, not like there's obviously a million cool things that I'd love to point out and that we could change stuff, but a lot of it's derailing. But there's only yeah. a few things that you are doing a lot that I look at and go, oh, this would be useful to you in general. So, so for example, um, right now the reason it's not working for that function you've got at the moment is because it works on lists. Now, the reason it works on lists is because the random function, as you can see, random.range, yeah. it requires an object to have a start and an end. Now, if you remember, way back when we talked about the concept of enumerables and yeah. how an enumerable, despite looking like a list, isn't really a list. It's just a thing that promises more stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the metaphor I used back then was like a shop, a number of people who visited the shop. And it's like saying, how many people visited the shop today? Well, the day is over, so I can't tell you. Until things stop coming through the door, I don't really answer that question. And so you can imagine writing a random that range between zero and when people stop coming through the door is a hard ask when there's no end at the moment for that to know the answer to the question. So you can do this one of two ways. You could either write an extension method on enumerables, which would make every single enumerable be able to take a random, but it'll secretly be passing to a list every time, which would be bad for performance. Or if you ever want to take a random, you have to first do that yourself. So if uh, you were to write either dot two array dot take random or dot two list dot take random, right where where you are in the uh, one twenty three line, then you will be able to use that random function because it is now a thing which has a total count. You will basically like close the shop door for the day, you know. Okay. It's yeah. It's, it's one of those frustrating. Yeah. That's no. That's how, fine. How don't do that thing works, but it's. It's, it's basically a cart before the horse problem. Yeah. You can't ask for a you can't ask for a random one to stop taking yeah. things in first. <laughs> yeah, I mean? that makes sense. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave it. I know you can't see what I did quite yet, and what you're actually seeing, I've undone. So you you're kind of time traveling. In yeah, a way. I'm, I'm, I'm probably probably a bit back in time. Yeah, just a bit. Way, yeah. But I will leave it. it. This is gonna work right here because I just add to list because uh, I realize that by doing where I'm removing the list and make it's no longer a list. Yes. And and I think what I need to do is when I have more time is um do more of that. I think my my general uh uh MO in all of this is to make it work while implementing the stuff I've learned in the past many weeks or months and then later when I come back be like I can make this better <laughs> and then updating it yeah. again. So Well well like so the thing is, you're in a unique position where I'm trying to sort of wrestle the point. Like, there is, there's like sweeping architectural stuff that I like talking about, sort of like the big deep philosophical whatever. Yeah. But there's also the practical realities that you are delivering a product. And every so often, there's something I'll like point at, like that using static, that will make your life a lot easier the way you're working. It yeah. won't require you to change what you're doing. It will just solve a problem that's currently a pain in the ass for you. And while normally I would caveat using it that way, the fact of the matter is you're already doing it the way you're doing it and if i can make that job easier that's good enough it, it will teach you something new the other stuff can be done at a later time yeah and i say all of this to say that the the concept of extension methods is something that uniquely with the workflow you built for yourself will save you a lot of time effectively there are loads of places where you have sort of coalesced on similar behavior sets yeah where you, you've decided for example you made a thing and you said, oh, I like the idea of this being 
turn on, turn off, or enable or disable, or I like yeah. the idea of this having group and ungroup. And so you kind of built a pseudo language around your own stuff, but you're having to, whenever you decide to implement it on something new, go and write, like, almost copy and paste the same four lines of, like, okay, and give it a group and put it here and give it a thing and add a name for it. And you're just doing the same bits over and over. Yeah. And the, the point of extension methods is they can extend onto things. And so you can effectively retroactively for everything that has whatever property you want, apply a new behavior. So, um, for example, I've done this before on things like uh, strings have no concept of knowing if they are an email address or not. And you could go and make a whole class called email address checker and all this kind of stuff, or you could build a hacky little thing that takes any string anywhere in your project and just say dot is email address and just check true or false. You shouldn't do that. It has no, like it makes no sense in ninety percent of cases where like you should be able to just check if any any string happens to be email address. But it's a quick feature that suddenly makes the whole application easier to work with. And the way that the stuff you're doing is going, I can picture a ton of this stuff where if you find yourself doing lots of like dot where specifically is active or whatever, you could just have an extension method on something where you could like literally have a list of any entity and just go dot any or null or dot has active state or yeah. has at least one weapon. These kinds of like conceptual broader questions you can just ask on your systems. And again, but while there's caveats as to why I wouldn't normally recommend doing that, it, I can picture so many scenarios where like you would have to go on a rabbit hole of writing a bunch of stuff where we could just do one or two small things and extensions that would do all of that for you. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, I do. I do. Um, one of the things I learned at some point and, and, and it gets it gets reiterated through conversations like this is that if you find yourself writing something more than once or twice, then you can probably do it better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or at least, and, and better, obviously, is, is subject. one of those things yes, where yes, yes. I, I often get those debates, too, where it's like, yeah, there's the, like, academic push classes up where you're doing it, but practically, the whole point of all of this is to make your life easier as a developer, and, yeah. and the, the, the cost of writing multiple times isn't actually the cost of writing multiple times. It's like, oh, it's just, I can copy and paste it. That's not taking much time. That's easy. That's not the cost. The cost is when you change it, and you're like, oh, shit, there's, like, eight places, and I have to put them in, catch them all, and remember that one. And then now you're hunting down a bug where you copy and paste it and you change nine of them, but you forgot one because you changed the name of the method halfway through the project. And now, now you're debugging something for a week. So uh, not doing duplication is less about the like academics of how long it takes. It's more about the fact that for every duplication, you've got two things which do conceptually the same thing, but may not always do the same thing. And you'll, you won't always remember to replicate the changes to both. And that's where the real cost comes in. You know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for this. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to fun. move on for now because I do have a special date coming up in a couple of weeks, and I've got a lot of work to do. Turns out, and I didn't expect this to happen. So suddenly, I can't talk about. But man, save the date oh, for sorry. the twenty eighth. Save the date. Nice. Uh, for for you, you you might be able to figure it out because I talked to you about it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, suddenly, it's 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 you know sometimes you do hurry up and wait. Sometimes it's a it's a it's a wait. Then whoa, hurry up. <laughs> It's the opposite in this time. So, lots going on. It's going to be a fun right, time. So I, I will uh, leave you to it then. Enjoy. And um, yeah, it's just my, I guess my, my homework for you while I work on it. Ah, yes. Think about specifically stuff, lists of things are the best candidates. You do a lot of stuff with it. Anytime you're writing like a where clause like that, and you're doing where clauses that are like kind of specific, but you're doing them multiple times. Yeah. Like where not null and where group isn't empty and where has this letter in it. You could just conceptually change that whole thing to like where group has name or yeah. is like name or something. So just, even if you just make a mental list and, and the fact that you're using Obsidian, you can stop with you and then go, oh, it'd be cool if I had this. And then I guarantee you they're so easy to make that like if you had a list, we could bang out 20 of them and like half an hour at some stage that's so. that's that's why this is so damn long because this came from from our conversation about the editor script uh extensions i guess is if that's right mm. and now there's yeah. a shit ton of i know you probably can't see it yet but there's 600 lines seven 600 over 600 lines of of uh editor Editor script. You, you, you did certainly run with that. I do, I do remember you yeah. enjoying that. And I think, I think yeah. it helps. I think I, like I, I, even myself watching, like I can read your intention when you're designing editor stuff in a way that's like compelling for me as a viewer. And I imagine other people have an easier time to. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Well, thanks, Jason. There you go. No problem. Have a good one. Yeah, Bye. That was fun. It's always fun to have a guest on, and Jason is a wonderful guest. All right. Let's see if this button works now. It should. All right. Random hair. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's not super fast, but it works. I wonder why it's not so fast. All right, so we got lots of different hairs. It looks like there's two different colors for some reason. I wonder if they're using different materials. It's possible. Um, okay, so we have lots of hairs and now we're gonna do similar things to the mustache. Um, how many mustaches do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight moustaches. So, moustache A, B, C, oops, D, E, oops, E. Ah, gosh darn it, F, G, and H. All right. So we will do our reload here. And moustaches, H, add. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have fun with these moustaches. <laughs> <laughs> that looks cool though, right? <laughs> I think that looks cool enough. Let's add some more. Uh, gee. Oh man. Oh, that's the Tom Selleck right there. And that's the Tom Selleck. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious. There we go. That's fun. This is fun. We're, we're having fun. We like to have fun here on the show. That's a very similar. Those two are very similar. Moustache B and Moustache A. You know, really, all of these could be kind of Tom Selleck, but that one was definitely a Tom Selleck. All right. So now we can do our randomized ones. <laughs> uh, there we go. But we also need none. None. That's weird. <gasps> they can't have the same name. Oh, no mustache. Okay. And that means I should have I should change the hair none to be no hair. No hair. And that's why that Okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. Weapon no weapon um and then we won't do that for wardrobe. That's because there's no there's no default. But now if we do random, it's possible that it will randomize to no mustache. Yeah. Alright, let's look at the beards. How many beards do we have? A whole bunch. Alright, oh, this is gonna take a bit. Beard A B. C, D, E, F, G, yeah. I don't know, okay, G, H, 
I J K L M oops wrong button N O P Damn, we did too many. Q R S T and U and get ahead of ourselves here. No beard. Oh man. Bring up my chat again. Jeez. <laughs> oh, the old Tom Selleck. All right. So I already have these um, up right here. So I'm just going to drag these over since I already have it up and they're so nicely named. In this case, it's faster to do it like this than to do it the other way. And it's always good to provide multiple methods in order to allow people to do the fastest method. I know, we would have to go to AA, BB, the spreadsheet style. Why did we do letters for this instead of numbers? I don't know, probably because I didn't say do numbers early enough and then it was just kind of too late. Well, that's a beard. Is this fun? This is fun. Like I said, we like to have fun in this part's super fun. It could be an option to say, take a thing and make it all a thing. So add all as individual objects. Hold on, the wheels in my head are moving. If I go beards, Ooh. Ooh. Add as individuals. And then it would add one group for each individual object. Oh, shit. That sounds like I should do that. Right? Hmm. This is the problem. I always think of more things to do, to add. And then it gets bigger and bigger and longer and longer. All right, let's check out random beards. Nice, how about that? That changes the look of these characters quite substantially. Um, You know what I need is an, a random icon. Um, so I've, I've been using these icons from, and Story, if you're still around, uh, another thing I, I think you told me once about um, the built-in Unity icons. Um, and 
I can't find them. I had a list or I, I think I was actually using some, but now I have no idea where I was using it. But I've got all these other symbols, but none of them are really random, um, like a, a symbol for random, like a shuffle uh, or something like that. You know, the classic arrows, like one goes up, one goes down. Um, the courses I uh, when I signed up for Jason Wyman's course I got my company to pay for it the graph ones yeah I can't well let me see Well, I'll have to find it another time. I'll do that another time. For now, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do... Um, we'll do this symbol for now. Um, all right, so... We'll do it after... After this, I suppose, uh, symbol star closed. So show default toggle, and we're going to do new one private void show random toggle prefab group group bool header equals false and. Um, no, don't don't judge me for copy pasting things, but I'm gonna copy paste things because this is very similar to what I want up here, but different. Uh, so symbol, this symbol. And we're going to say if off, this will not be included in the random method. Uh, okay. And if there's no group type, then you can't do it. And then group uh, random can random uh, can be randomized. Um, okay. Uh, Okay, those should be the same. Uh, if it's default, actually, no, I think I don't need that. Can be randomized. Button toggle can be randomized. Arrow symbol right. Don't need to worry about that. Okay. Don't need to worry about that. Let's see if it works. Oh, we haven't called it. Hmm. So we need to call it two places. Here is going to be null and true for header. And the other one is if here. Nope. This one where we do that in group. Oops. OK. Now let's see if it works. This looks kind of like a interesting pirate. <laughs> you sent me the URL. It's like my birthday. 
Oh boy. Let me load up this for everyone to see. There we go. That's it. I need to put this in my obsidian. Look at all those. Look at all those. That's a ton. Yep. All right. Um, thank you for that, Jason. All right. Oh, I should have set this to true. Damn it. Too late. Oh, there's probably a button there. Um, so... Okay, how about this? We'll do this. Um, exclude from random. Ah. Exclude from random. That way if it's supposed to be false. Uh, show random toggle. Um, do, 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 group type. So I do need a colors, I guess. Um, so we're going to do uh, colors if um, group dot exclude from random. So if it's ex if we are excluding from random, then we're going to background colors be color dot black and color dot um, gray otherwise, and then for the font color dot gray and color dot white and we'll see if that works Okay, good. They can all be randomized. Oh, that's not right. Why is it doing it on all of them? Group is just a prefab group, not a list of prefab groups. Well, that's that's odd. Unexpected behavior. Why is that happening? Button toggle. Just if we click the button, then we get the opposite. That's all it is. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let me let me fix this. Okay. 
um, can random randomize. I was thinking about this a second ago, and I was like, ugh. Okay. And we will make this be true by default, which is where it should have been in the beginning. Maybe that will help. Um, and then here it's going to be that. Okay, so now we should be randomized. Oh, we're not. We haven't implemented that yet, but all right. Good. Now it's working. That part's working. So now we just need to check in our random thing whether we can randomize them. Um, so uh, show random toggle. Um, oops. Can random. Can randomize. Um, so this is where we're going to say that and if prefab groups dot count where x um, x dot can randomize equals less than two, then return false. And fix this. So if that is less than two, then return false. Let's see if that works. If we remove most of these, it did not update this. Uh, it should have. Oh, but that's because it's. Um, I don't know what. Why isn't? Is it because it's active, so it's being forced to be green? Activate random group. Uh, and X dot can randomize. Do, 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 do. Not working. Should only be doing those three, unless this is somehow reversed. Oh yes, this is definitely reversed. That's why. Um, uh, circle right, yes. The colors are reversed gray black and white and gray there we go because I, I reversed the um, I don't know the polarity or whatever it is of the two and now this should revert there we go now does it turn off as expected? It does, but they all turn off. So that's not right. Um, random. 
uh, color if we need the reset color button there or rather we need to redo this just in case it needs to be green or something. Okay, good. Now it should randomize just between those two. Good. And since I have that not exclude the active ones, then it just toggles them. But of course, of course, I want all of them to be on. OK. And then the hairs I'll have all of them. And the mustaches. Now the other ones should default to true. I just didn't have that set in the code, unfortunately. So when it loaded, all of these that were already active were suddenly set to false. But the other ones that haven't really been loaded yet should be OK. Um, yeah, so now the option is to set the randomize all button um, up at the top, I guess, um, by create new group, uh, show PFA prefabs haha ha, prefabs groups and show show but uh, option buttons or action buttons we'll say action buttons private void show action buttons and our action buttons and put a space up there too and we're gonna say if button uh, randomize all uh, and we'll make this 100 wide. So if we do that, we're going to say activate uh, manager to activate random all groups. Um, but to do this, we will check, see, if not can randomize group type, then continue. Because we don't want to run this if there's zero things there. Because then there would be nothing to randomize. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here's buttons not there. It's down here. Is that okay to have it down there? I thought it would be up here. Why is it down there? Activate all in groups on show active button. Show prefab groups. Oh yeah. Setup and options. Group types. Show prefab groups. Oh. Okay. I see. Okay. I see. I keep saying that, but I see now. Do you guys see those new uh, space pictures, those were pretty cool. Okay, so these are the ones that actually show the group things. Um, so I'm going to put it up here. But I want to do a line. Do I have a thing for a line? 
horizontal line. Do I have something for a line? Line. Draw. Draw, 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 draw. No horizontal gap. Hmm. Message box. What if we do? Editor GUI layout dot space. Where are our options here? I guess it could be color, color line. And what we can do is do a um, color, color, and then int height equals two by default. Uh, and then we will do So var um, background color equals editor, editor GUI layout dot background. Can you get background color? Or GUI layout? Where is background color? GUI dot background color. Okay. Um, where's my Where's the error? Horizon horizontal line. A color line, that's why I called it. GUI dot background color. Can you get that? Or is that a set only? Well maybe you get it bar content color equals GUI dot content color. We're going to cache those and then we're going to set the I guess it's really only background color that we care about so we'll, then we're going to set GUI dot background color equals color and then we're going to say message box um, shoot we don't we can't do that I don't think this is going to work. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think space will be color. It's got to be a, a way to just draw a line, right? You'd think. Let's see. Unity 3D editor script draw horizontal line. Not handles, horizontal line. That. Yeah, something like that. What's this more extravagant one? Well, that seems like a lot of code. Huh. Yeah, that could work. We'll just make this so uh, we'll do space line or line with space int height equals two. And then we'll do I'll just line. We'll just do line. Screw that. Keep it simple for now. 
and it's going to be that. So we can just do this and then call line. Okay. We don't even have to pass in, do we? I guess we might have to. Okay. What I wanted, the whole point of that I brought the wrong thing up. Was to do line here and line here to separate out that button from the other buttons. I got some chocolate covered espresso beans today. Oh, I can't wait to try them. But in the car on the way home, they were melting. They have a very low or high melting, low melting temperature. Yeah. There we go. So that just separates it out a little bit. Anyways, randomize all. Does it work? It does not work or it's super slow. Oh. It works, but it's slow. So there we go. This is a use case for having the helmets separate from the hair, or the hair and the helmets all on the same thing. But not much you can do about the clipping on this. Hey, but that's cool. There's a lot of different looks now. Isn't that neat? Looks like he's a grunge rock character. Neat. So there is a reason now to have um, to have the the other the option to turn off a group when one group is activated. Uh, so this is going to be hair v three, and yeah. So I guess what what I need to do is set all these to be hair v three as well. Let's see. Whoops, wrong one. I need this one. Demo hair. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just copy the settings. Can I do that? Copy values. values. Oh, shit. That looks different. Oh, because we have a different one of these. Ah, uh, yes. Where's my I think that's the right one. These are all old. I need to just remove those ones. They can be deleted. Um, is that the right one? I guess it is. Yep, 
Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Okay, so that's that. So now here's the deal. It's been three hours, it's time for me to go. But what comes next, the goal for tonight on this wonderful Friday night is to make the demo video for this. So you've just seen me set it up and change it off over the past three hours and make some updates. I might make that group update one where the you can say if this group turns on, then turn off, then set this other explicit group um, so that if the wardrobe with the uh, with the hel helmets come on, such as armor ten, then we can say, oh, if armor ten comes on, then we want to set the hair to be no hair, um, and uh, I guess the beard's probably fine. That's kind of neat how that works. Um, right here instead um, so there you go so that's the goal tonight is maybe add that function and then make the video where uh, you know the ones in the background are just gonna be standing there but then I'm gonna take probably the human male and um, showcase cr adding stuff uh, basically do what I just did but in a much shorter time period um, just to showcase the the basics uh, with the goal of, of basically showing people hey it's easier to add the specific armors and stuff if you have those packs. If you don't have those packs, then don't worry. Go get those packs. But um, it's also easy to mix and match. And that's going to be something that I'm going to do at the end of that video, I think, in a um, more slowly, in a way, because... Uh, yeah, because, because there's stuff you can do. Maybe I'll try it right now just to see. Just to see. Um, I'm going to copy the half orc armor and turn that on and we're going to call this mixed one and um, for mixed one we look at our objects we have all these half orc ones but let's start mixing and matching and seeing what we like from everything uh, maybe we won't have any of these ones left in the end um, maybe we will let's see uh, I don't need those. So I'm going to get rid of those. Do I want my bracers? No. Do I want my arm wraps? Maybe we'll keep the arm wraps and the bicep wraps. And we'll delete that. We'll delete all these other ones. Whoops. needs to update this after the deletes or something. So yeah, we're going to take off a whole lot of his stuff. Okay, we'll start with the arm wraps and then we will go to the... Oh! Interesting. I guess we need to click this button. Okay. And now we'll go to the human armor. Um, and let's do the pants from here. Trousers. And we'll do the boots from here. And then from the elf, we're going to do the, what does the belts look like? Uh, I don't know if the belts will really work with this. 
they weren't, of course, made to work with these pants necessarily. So they are a little bit wider. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to update this to automatically update these to match whatever is available. Um, clearly, there's more in this list than is actually in the in the uh, list of objects. I don't know if there's a even a belt option. I don't think there is. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. That's fine. Let's see what happens if we add the elf shirt. Uh, and our elf shirt shape is really high. That's interesting. That's probably a bug somewhere that I have to fix. Um, For now, I'll just there we go. Okay. Okay, so now that's a good mix already. We can go further though. I think we can do a little bit more um, for this mixed wardrobe group stuff. Um, let me take something from one of the armors. Let's see. Why is this showing all these? Interesting. Apparently, shirt is still being set unless I accidentally changed it on the prefab, which would be a problem. Where are my elves? Oh, my elves are up here. Prefabs. Oh, actually, it's not the elf, it's the half orc elf arm. Half orc elf armor. And shirt. No, it's low. So it must be happening up here. That's interesting. I turned off the shape list. What's it called? Just shirt. Shirt length. All right, there we go. Must be a bug. All right. Uh, and this is a bug too, it looks like. There we go. Need to reload that. Oh yeah, armor two is too big. I, maybe armor one main. Let's see what that looks like. If I do that, I don't, I'm not going to do that one. Uh, let's try. Half orc armor. Let's see if we do the X belts. Does that cut through too much? It does. Paul 
children. That looks silly, I think. Well, you get the picture, right? Do you get the picture? Do you get the picture? Yes, I think you do. I'm getting tired. Well, maybe you get the picture. So there you go. There's a mixed wardrobe. Um, and he looks pretty much like he needs a motorcycle, first of all. Um, but that's pretty cool. And uh, we can randomize the hair. Give him random hairs. Give him random beards. Give him random mustaches. Or none. Anyways, you get the idea. You got a cool looking dude here. All right, so that's my, my job tonight is to make that video and to update all of the packs in the humans and armors so that they all have the same scripts basically um and whatnot so there you go thanks for watching i'm gonna take a break and maybe take a short nap is it too late for a nap it might be too late for a nap i don't know what i'll do maybe i'll go out for a short walk mm -hmm. all right thanks everybody i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and that you're able to do something fun tonight or tomorrow or this morning depending on your time zone thanks